immediately defers responsibility. In particular, we cannot do anything about it. It's just the way students are. Either good or bad. This good student, bad student perspective is also known as the blame the students approach to teaching and is level one in John Big's three levels of thinking about teaching. A level one teacher is concerned with what students are. For him, the exam is a matter of sorting the good students from the bad. A level two teacher has the focus on the teacher and is concerned with what the teacher does. From this perspective, there are good teachers. I think I had mentioned yesterday, and uh, you'll see the information in blue. And yeah. bad teachers. For the proof of lemma 37b, assuming that proposition 21g holds. This perspective is also known as the blame the teacher's perspective. A so-called good level two teacher will attempt to arm himself with an armada of teaching techniques, tips, and tricks. There are many types of level two teachers. However, common for most of these, apart from having a teacher focus, is that the result is passive students. We need to engage and activate the students. And then she said, it was the transition system. <laughs> Great teacher. Man, that guy was good. Yeah, but I didn't really get the point about the indexes, and I wasn't too sure about the rest either, but uh, yeah, great teacher. As clearly demonstrated by our entertainer teacher, activation itself is not enough. A teacher at the most advanced level, level three, is particularly concerned with what a student does before, during, and after teaching. That is, he is particularly concerned with the product or the learning outcome of the teaching. But before we can go there, we need to understand understanding. Okay, we need to understand understanding. So at this point, you see the um, the setting um, that we are supposed to be informed about this particular teaching and learning. So there are many if needed comments. If needed. Now let me try to set up the formula first, because it's very important that you got informed. some time to put into perspective what you just seen. Um, I give you about five minutes back again. Okay? So let's take a little bit about what you have just watched and what's the message there, all right? Before we proceed to the next step, I would like you to spend five minutes time after watching this very interesting video on what you think about student learning or teachers teaching. Or if you remember correctly, if 
teacher who brain the students for what they are, and their student brain the teacher for what they are, and what's the solutions introduced by John Big here in this episode? Or whatever reactions or implications that you can capture after watching this eight minutes of video, all right? You are free to talk with your learning partner. I do not want you to be isolated, okay? So this is the episode called Teaching, Teaching, and Understanding, Understanding, all right? And if you understand uh, properly, I'm helping you to understand this feed, all right? Deep versus surface learning. And we have two personas here, right? One is Susan, and one is Robert. Oh, you may put yourself into the positions to tell when I am going to be Susan. When I will try to find myself to be wrong, okay? Under what kind of circumstances? Feel comfortable to express your view, all right? You understand Susan, right? You understand Robert, right? I do not mean to transform you to be a lady or transform a lady to be a man, but that the, the persona is very important, okay? The character which are portrayed in the movie is very important. Feel free to use about five minutes time to join down some of your comments here. I want to see your responses and then we proceed to the second answer. Episode number one, it's about teaching and learning. All right. take attendance during this period of your writing, all right?
it's important that I introduce you to this topic in the second week of the secondary contract. Otherwise, you would not appreciate the challenge of I self regulated them. It's your personal choice between this one or this one, all right? Let's see. What do you think, after watching the first episode of this teaching, teaching and understanding, understanding, can you tell something of your personal story of deep learning or service learning based on your perceptions? Or you can tell when you're going to be Robert, when you're going to be Susan, under what circumstances? Then how do you describe the attitude towards teaching and learning? Are you going to do something that's your first reaction? Or I'm a teacher, or if I'm a teacher, I cannot see that still doing something do I have to play the student. This kind of situation is all about you. But do you think of Susan? Oh, no, Susan, who is sort of a good student? You not only do good, it's not a cause, but it's every cause. What about Robert? just discovered that I did not send out a call for participation last week. And um, since we do not have a second day this week, we bring a holiday, so we might have to save it until next week.
do in order to give me the key compositions, it's to go to Dr. Betts' talk to a hotline from last year. Okay, so here we go. If you go to um, Dr. Betts, QA a hotline from last week. Next Monday is not a holiday, right? We have to come back, right? That's good, that's good. We just lose one day. But I discovered that the school is very kind this, this semester. Even though we lose one school day, they will make it up for us after November the 29th, right? So um, I remember we have two makeup class, one on December the 1st, the other on December the 4th. So basically, you will not lose anything. That means you will have your deadline extended until that last day for your learning performance. That's very good. Let's see. Good. Helia, you got some ideas? Me and my partner think that they're more and more robot than here because the society just needs someone who has the paper to visit the free answers. Not the one who learned and practice much. But this is a very significant statement, right? You believe this is what the society produces, and the teachers always tag the student with a mark, the students got it, it's not fair, uh, because everyone has his own weaknesses. So that means, uh, Kids' job is to categorize students with their demonstrated performance. So we need to be robot in order to be practical. That means no one can be perfect. I think learning something with passions or knowledge is an often interesting. Now, okay, uh, we got some very interesting, passionate statements in that. When it comes down to your decisions to choose between deep and surface learning, what do you think? All right. Very good, thank you, Alia and Brian. So, we need to wait. It's a very important as a personal choice. And this is what we call the, uh, when we come to study, we have three important things to study, to learn. One is called the attitude. The second is called the uh, skills. The third is called the knowledge. Attitude for skill versus knowledge, okay? And normally, this question comes more towards the attitude part, and then the skills grow up in the knowledge part, the confidence. Sometimes we believe that um, if we do it the other way, it's much more fair. But the question is, is this universal true?
it's isn't you about to become Robert sometime? And you absolutely Susan without any chance of becoming a Robert. It's very hot. It depends. Lumberly, this is an interesting one. Very tough. How much is interest? Now, from the uh, from the observations of the first day of class, or first week of class questionnaire, when I try to invite you to express why you take this course, many of you say, "No, I did not choose this course. Someone has chosen this for me." And I ask, "Who chose the course for you?" Okay, and then I don't, I'm not interested in that at all. But how do you discover interest in something? Okay. Uh, Susan is the kind of person of character who will always get to the bottom of things. I mean, she has a heart to learn. I do not need as a teacher to force her to do anything. But Robert is the very practical person who knows how much effort to invest for something he believes in important. Okay, now let me go here one more time. All right, I got some more. This is from Ruby. Ruby said, I think I am the student like Robin. But I do not think I'm a bad student. Well, there's no such value judgment yet. When I was having some interesting lessons, I would also do what Susan has done. Very good. Does that mean I'm a good student? It's not worry. For teachers, I don't think they should put students in a good or bad time. And that is a very good, that's a very good position, right? In the in the in the episodes there, they have tried to stimulate your thinking by stamping your in good student, bad student, based on what? Alright? And then they also provide some kind of very interesting positions that lead to into an argument. Do you believe there we need to brain the teacher for something, or do you believe we need to brain the student for something? Or we can put them together in such a way that we can produce a win win situations. So let's go for the second episode. The knowledge perspective versus the learning perspective. Since we were talking about activation, I'd like to activate you, the viewer, using the following puzzle. Please consider the following numeric transcription system where one is written like this, two like this, and so forth. I'll give you 10 seconds. Okay, 10 seconds. Remember that. Now I'd like you to write down, say the last five digits of my office phone number. One, eight, seven, two, five, in this numeric system. We, the Homo sapiens, are quite bad at memorizing random information. Psychologists claim that we are only able to hold seven plus minus two pieces of random information in our short-term memory. Now, suppose I showed you the following grid. As you can see in this number system, one is at the top left corner, and hence written like this, Whereas, for example, 8 is at the bottom, and hence written like this. Now you can probably write anything using this silly number system for the next 65 years. The point is that we as humans learn by associating new and unknown information with old and known information or that we build new information on top of old information. In this case, it was easy. We simply exploited that you all knew a certain geometric shape, the grid symbol, and the numeric layout of a conventional telephone. But when teaching semantics or fertilization or political power theory or Roman literature, it may not be clear what the students know or how they know it. The point is that knowledge is constructed as a result of the learner's activity. This is in sharp contrast to the old, now abandoned idea 
that knowledge is transmitted from a teacher to a passive learner. Transmission is not the way humans learn. Active knowledge construction is. Learning takes place through the active behavior of the student. It is what he does that he learns, not what the teacher does. However, activation itself is not enough. We also need a theory of understanding to take into consideration how students are activated. Professor John Diggs has such a theory. The solo taxonomy, short for structure of the observed learning outcome, distinguishes five levels according to the cognitive processes required to obtain them. The lowest level of the taxonomy, level one, is known as the pre-structural level, at which the student has no understanding uses irrelevant information and or misses the point altogether. One final question. What is a cow? Mm. Level two is known as the unistructural level, where a student will focus on one relevant aspect only. Here the student has the competence to identify, to do a procedure, and or to recite. A cow is when you're milking. A student at the multi-structural level, level three, can focus on several relevant aspects, but they are considered independently. He is able to classify, to combine, to enumerate, and so on. Cows give us milk, and when slaughtered, they give us oil, meat, fats, bone, and leather. At level four, which is called the relational level, a student can now link and integrate several parts into a coherent whole. Details are linked to conclusion, and its meaning is understood. He has the ability to relate, to compare, to analyze, and so on. The essential difference between a Jersey cow and a Hereford Angus cow is that a Jersey cow produces a lot more milk, but is substantially smaller. At the fifth and highest level, the extended abstract level, a student has the capacity to generalize the structure beyond the information given, and even produce new hypotheses or theories which may then be scrutinized. Cattle or kai are domesticated ungulates, a member of the subfamily bovine, and it seems to me that humans must have been the root cause for the diversification of cattle because they were selected for different genetic characteristics like draft, milk, meat, size, coloring, behavior, to name a few. We refer to levels four and five as deep understanding. This one can prove that it is always an equivalence relation. Yeah. Excuse me, isn't this the same as last week except with the precision? Levels two and three are referred to as surface understanding. We could have composition, the usual semicolon operator, and then we'll have an if then else con construct and. Wait, is that a colon or a semicolon? Okay, you got some ideas about the way we learn. Our professor John Bill get this very odd data that we assume students learn by transmitting knowledge from a teacher that our students have. So open up your head. Uh, here comes the knowledge. But how are we going to learn? It's how we advise students to engage themselves into putting things together on their own. So we invite you through the different learning contract. Number one, to get you through some practices of picking up knowledge, asking questions, and organizing them for your own storytelling. Number two, learning contract number two, on top of this basic practice of learning, give you a time frame, which is not as long as what you want, but just enough that you do something that requires you to make the best use of the time to set goals, to negotiate collaboration terms with your partners, and then do something without procrastination. Now remember, 
information literacy lessons, the project information literacy lessons. You need to go to find something through the Wikipedia, through the library. You need to learn stop procrastinating. You need to avoid being frustrated. You need to use strategies. And you don't just use your own strategies, but since you're working as a member of a pair and also a member of a team, you need to have some team-wise and pair-wise strategies. And what are the usually goals of having strategies? Not to have nothing produced when you are responsible for something important. Knowledge here, it's produced, not transmitted. Okay? And when we produce knowledge, how are we going to get started? So let me break you the last episode because time is running out. Four minutes. In this particular course, so the million dollar question is how do we get students to learn what we want them to? More precisely, how do we get a student's activity to match our intention as a teacher? The answer is constructive alignment. That is, to clearly state the learning objectives of the course in terms of the solar taxonomy. To make the exam measure precisely those and tell this to the students. And to choose appropriate teaching learning activities to train these skills and competences during the course. The constructive alignment theory was developed by Professor John Biggs. Let's first have a look at an unaligned course. We have the teacher's intention, the student's activity, and the exam's assessment in play. The teacher has an intention. Let's suppose he wants the students to be able to explain, relate, prove, and apply. And now suppose the exam measures something else. For example, the ability to memorize, to describe. In this case, Robert will focus only on the skills required for the test, disregarding the teacher's intentions. This is called dealing with the test. Of course, you can extend with as many operations as you like. So, do we have to know about this for the exam? Okay, here's the thing. I know what you're asking, but I figure, and Jim also told me, that if I memorize headlines and skip to the first chapters, I should be okay for the exam. Now let's have a look at an aligned course. Here the teacher has taken great care in making the exam explicitly conform to his intentions so that the exam now measures the ability to explain, relate, prove, and apply. Here there is no shortcut for Robert. Whatever happens, he just ends up learning what the teacher is intending. So these are the course objectives and also what you'll be expected to be able to do at the exam and what my exam will measure. Furthermore, this is what we're going to reflect upon during the course and what you'll be trained in doing during the, the entire course. A level three teacher has a student learning focus. This is the highest level in John Dick's three levels of thinking about teaching. So now I'd like to give you three minutes to prepare an argument for why this aspect is syntactic and not semantic. Now we are in a position to actually define good teaching. Good teaching is getting most students to use the higher level cognitive processes that the more academic students use spontaneously. Or you might say, teach so that Robert behaves like Susan.
Iris, after our discussions, we observed that there are more problems in the secondary schools because our teacher would tell us what to do. However, there are more Susan in university now because we have to be responsible for what we do, how we do it in study. Thank you very much, Iris. Okay, I hope this is very much the same. Okay, what do you think? Cindy, I think we should not go to university just for a piece of paper. It's wasting our time and I think we should treasure that we have the opportunity to study in university. But I think it's not easy to become a student nice Susan. To become a student nice Susan, we need to have a big interest in what we are learning. So we should choose the lessons we really like as we have the opportunity to choose it. All right? So you still have the choice. It's very good. And then this is from Vivian. I think it's about getting students to take responsibility for their own learning and establishing trust between student and teacher. Very good. The student just depend on the robot, and it becomes more common. Where teachers cannot reach the student, then the learning only be managed by the student. So that is a little bit, uh, we need to figure out logic here. It's very important that you express that. And then from Jessica, we should not just know the surface of our learning. We have better understand our learning. Not only understand the theory, but also the applications. I think use of our subject is the most important thing to survive in society. Okay, very good. And then Elisa, for some GE cores, I would rob it. I'm not very really interested in those GE cores, but because of UM's policy, I must complete all the 10 mil, 10, 10, fair, five. For the course I do not interest in, it's okay for me to be rob it. I want to put more focus on the subjects I'm interested in, right? I see a course, not to spend my limited time with OCM and GE. And that is very realistic. Any student who use this thinking, what we call a strategy. I used to ask my student to do a very simple exercise in the class. What do you think of learning and your practice of learning? And this is from C. Susan's way of learning is kind of active. Why compared to Robert's way of learning? I think for me, when I have taken an interest in the course, when I feel passionate and curious and want to get to know more, I would probably be using Susan's way of learning. Otherwise, I would use some sort of following Robert's way, okay? And the solutions could be teachers and students should know what is their role, what they should do, and put themselves into the other series. Very good. Teacher, for instance, should try hard to help students and the students try to find something that they're interested in is the responsibility for them. Well, I think uh, I mean C's perspective is very much like the, um, the last statement of the last episode. How do we teacher do something to help students such that students should behave more nice Susan than Robin, okay, in the course of learning? Actually, is an attitude problem. And the attitude will choose a different type of approaches to learn. Okay, we're going to talk about approaches to learn later. Approaches to learn is something you need to go through before you can get to something else. It's not just thinking one step process. I'm sorry, I've taken you too long today. And that is for today's class. And I'm going to wish you a very happy national day. Okay, until next week. You know what's happening in Hong Kong now, right? Okay, you understand. Right. Thank you very much for coming. That's it for today's CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy. Until next week, stay in tune.